Hello friends, my name is Nina. I have another sit down video for you today, my unicorn onesie. And today I am going to be announcing a very exciting challenge that I will be personally participating in from the months of December to May. We are calling this Nina versus Jamie <laughs> because I'm not creative enough. Essentially, let me start from the beginning. Okay, so me and my friends, love to read. I have been really blessed with um, a group of friends who all love to read and write so we bond over that and so me and one of my friends Jamie, there she is, here is where I need to pause to tell you that um, first of all my voice is kind of gone, my, my apologies, but second of all Jamie is currently living abroad in Scotland. She goes to school in a castle and so that is why she can't be here but when we do end up finishing this challenge, you'll be able to meet her and we'll be able to talk about it. So anyways, back into the whole explanation. We have picked books for each other to read from the months of December to the months of May, and whoever reads the most in that time gets a present. We will make them a present uh, with a value up to $15 because presents are like my favorite thing in the world. So. We both love giving and receiving presents, so this is going to be amazing either way. We are counting things by page count, so the longer the book, the more points you get. We both chose books that total up to 10,000 pages. I have a Goodreads shelf for all the picks that I chose for her down in the description box below if you would like to keep up with um, what she's reading. I My 10,000 ended up totaling to 32 books, and I'm going to share them with you right now and then another video will be coming where I tell you what books she's chosen for me. So, this might be a long video, I have my laptop here and I'm just going to go through, give a tiny little explanation about why. I'm not going to be going into what these books are about because <laughs> there's 32 of them. These are in order of how much I want Jamie to read them. The first one. I have is The Book of Negroes. This is by Lawrence Hill and it's 470 pages. It is a historical fiction, which I know Jamie loves, but this is probably, it might be my top book of the year. I love this one and I think she'll really enjoy it as well. Next I have Sadie by Courtney Summers. I love Sadie and still not over the fact that I got a response and retweet from the author. I'm still fangirling. But this is a more of a mystery and it has to do with a podcast and I think that um, mystery and thriller are genres that Jamie doesn't usually reach for and I would love for her to sort of go outside of her comfort zone and read some of them. So I have quite a few on this list but Sadie also is just a fantastic book and I just want everybody to read it so that's why that's on here. Then I have Between Shades of Grey. This is by Ruta Sepetys. I'm also shocked that Jamie hasn't read this one yet. It's a historical fiction set in World War II and Ruta Sepetys is one of my favorite historical fiction authors. This was the first one I read by her and again I can still so clearly see some of the scenes in this one and that means a lot as a reader who forgets most everything so I think she'll really enjoy that one and I'm excited for her to read it. Then I have Slaughterhouse-Five by um, Kurt Vonnegut. Kurt Vonnegut's one of my favorite authors, this is my favorite classic and I just want someone else of my friends to read it so that we can talk about it and that's about it. Also I know that this is a book that she wouldn't usually reach for and I want to you know encourage a little bit more reaching. The next one is The Game of Love and Death. This is by Martha Brockenborough. This is a bo another book that's on my top books of the year. It's a historical fiction, but it focuses more on the magical realism elements, which I really love. And uh, again, most people I know have not read, actually nobody I know has read this book, so more people need to read it. And if I force Jamie to read it, then um, we can talk about it. So that's excellent. Then I have Every Heart of Doorway by Shauna McGuire. This is another one of my top books of the year. You guys probably know that because I, I talk about this one um, in my wrap up, but it's a short novella and it's about portal worlds and children and it also has a mystery element and I think Jamie will really like this one. And again, magical realism and mystery and especially because it's a short novella, I feel like those are all elements that she doesn't necessarily read a ton and we, we love stepping outside of our comfort zone. Next we have City of Ghosts by Victoria Schwab. This is an excellent middle grade and it's set in Edinburgh and fun fact, Jamie is not in 
Canada right now. She's in Scotland. So, um, the setting of this one is a real big draw for me to recommend it to her. Also, because Victoria Schwab is freaking amazing. So, why wouldn't I recommend it to her? Then I have Lock Every Door. This is by Riley Sager. Like I said, there's some thrillers on this list because I feel like it's a genre that she hasn't read a lot. So, I really like this one. I can't stop thinking about it. And it's one of my favorites of the year. And... I just want to see what she thinks, honestly. <laughs> then I have The Weight of Our Sky by Santa Alcav, another five star from this year. It's a historical fiction set in the 60s and it's different. It's a different historical fiction. It's about a time period I've never um, read or heard of really before. It's about um, the raids in Kuala Lumpur, I think, or Malaysia or something. Oh gosh, it's making me sound so horrible. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, I really loved it. It was um, heart-wrenching, and it was excellent, and I want her to read it. Then we have The Scorpio Races by Maggie Stiefvater. This is my favorite Maggie Stiefvater, the only Maggie Stiefvater that I actually like so far. It's her, a standalone, and there's a coastal town, and killer horses, and it's, like, her writing style goes so perfectly with this, and it's definitely a slower, more atmospheric read, but it's absolutely beautiful, and I think Jamie will really enjoy that. Then I have A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Mass. I loved this book this year. I read it because of Emma and now I'm making Jamie read it. It's a retelling but it's done in such an amazing way. I feel like usually with retellings they become almost predictable because you know the source content but with this one I it was not as predictable to me and I really loved that about it and I don't know just Get her hopping on the bandwagon. This is not, I don't know if she would read this one if I didn't tell her to, so that's exciting. Then we have We Are All Made of Molecules by Susan Nielsen. This is a contemporary, YA contemporary, which is another genre I know that is kind of iffy and I feel like it's hard to find good ones. So I read this one, I really liked it. I can't stop thinking about it again. It's darker, it's um, cute, it has an unlikable main character in it, so hopefully that doesn't turn her off for me because I really enjoyed it. Another contemporary, young adult contemporary that I have on here is Forgive Me Leonard Peacock. It was one of my favorite contemporaries of 20, well favorite books in general of 2015 or 2016, 2016. And I think it just has a really important mes message about the role that high school teachers can have in students' lives. And I just really loved it and I hope Jamie loves it too. Then I have House at the Bottom of a Lake by Josh Mallerman. I am so curious to see what Jamie thinks because I feel like this is the type of book that you either love or hate. It's a novella and it is a... the writing style is a little bit weird and the, the plot is a little bit weird and I feel like the sexual content in this book is more than Jamie usually reads which is weird because it's like a short novella you'd think it would be not super sexy but it it has a few scenes in there or one I just can't stop thinking about that one it's very weird anyway it's fine I just again this is one that Jamie would never pick up on her own and I'm really curious to see what she'll think then I have The Enchanted this is by Renee Denfeld this is about some inmates who are on death row and they um, there, it follows a defense lawyer and she like is saving them basically. I really liked it. It is horrific, but I think it's pretty um, educational and I think Jamie will really like it. I'm a criminal justice major too though, so I think I'm just kind of forcing my major on her because I'm taking some history courses this semester and they're killing me. Next I have Balzar. This is by Meg Willitzar. This is a, another young adult contemporary but it also has some magical realism elements. It was one of the most shocking like well done books that I read this year so I just want more people to read it. Not very many people have read that one. Then there is The Future of Us by Jay Asher. I believe this involves a podcast. No it doesn't. I don't know. I read this one a, quite a while ago as well and I read it in a day and I remember loving it and again I want to recommend Jamie some young adult contemporaries because I find it's really hard to find some good ones so that's why that one's there. Then I have City of Saints and Thieves. This is by Natalie C. Pearson. 
or Anderson. Natalie C. Anderson. This was the first and only physical arc I've ever received and I loved it. It's a heist, it's set in Kenya, and we love the setting, we love the plot. I think Jamie will really like this one. It might not be a five star for her, but it was a five star for me, so that's exciting. Then we have Sucker's Portfolio. This is the second Kurt Vonnegut that's on the list. This is a collection of short stories, which again is a genre that Jamie doesn't reach for. Genre? Sex? I don't know. It's not something that Jamie reaches for. And this collection, I feel like, is a really good idea of who Kurt Vonnegut is as a writer, because you have eight stories in succession, and they're all deep-ish, but then they also have, like, the ending, which is absolutely incredible. So I'm just really excited. I don't know anyone else who has read that either, and I just... I'm just forcing Jamie to read all the books that I've read and loved that no one else talks about so that I can talk to someone about it, basically, is what this is. Then I have 37 Things I Love. I don't know the author of this one because I read it such a long time ago, but this is a very underrated LGBT contemporary, young adult contemporary, about two girls falling in love, and I liked it when I read it. And it's pretty short, it's 240 pages. This Song Will Save Your Life by Lila Sales is another young adult contemporary short. It's about music. Again, I've explained the contemporary things a billion times, so I'm not going to repeat it, but there, that one's on the list. Then I have a couple more anthologies to get Jamie sort of reading some of those, see what she thinks. Um, My True Love Gave to Me is the next one. And it is one of the most memorable collections I've ever read, one of my favorites. And because we're reading in like December or January, I think that this is the perfect time for me to get her to read that. In the same vein, we have Let It Snow. This is three short stories by John Green, Lauren Miracle, and uh, Maureen Johnson. And I really loved this one as well. Plus, there's a movie coming out, I think, today when I'm filming this. So I don't know when I'm uploading this. <laughs> But it's out now on Netflix, so go watch it. Well, read the book and then watch it. Jamie, this is for you as well. I didn't mention there's an adaptation when we talked about this earlier, but there is, so we could watch it. Then there is The Star Touch Queen. This is by Rashani Chakshi. This is a fantasy that I feel like is hit or miss for a lot of people. It's kind of weird, and it's set up in two different parts, and the second part especially is just, like, very odd. But again, I'm just curious to see what she thinks of it, and I know I read this as a buddy read with Emma, and I liked it more than Emma did, and I'm just curious to see where Jamie lands on that, if she's going to like it as much as I did, or maybe less, like most other people, I don't know. Another fantasy that I have on here is Jep, who def defied the stars. I believe Jep is like this little dwarf little guy. It's been a really long time since I've read this as well, however, I think remember really enjoying it and I'm curious to see how Jamie's opinion compares to mine in the past but also just like introducing her to some fantasy that not a lot of people have heard about. Next one that I have is a literary fiction. It's Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Ng. Literary fiction is again like a genre that I don't reach for a lot and I don't think Jamie reaches for either. This one is, has like a mystery element to it as well. I really enjoyed it, it's heartbreaking. Then I have Angel, Angel Fall by Susan E. This is a paranormal. I love this when I read this, but I'm very curious to see if it'll still be as good now. And I know like our opinions can be different, so if Jamie doesn't like it now, that doesn't mean that I won't like it now, but it's, I'm just curious, okay? I'm just curious. Then I have Crimson Bound. This is by Rosamund Hodge. I love Rosamund Hodge, but a lot of people don't love her, and Jamie is one of those people. So I'm curious to see what she'll think of this one compared to Cruel Beauty by her. I know that her plots can be a little bit confusing, and I think that's probably part of the reason why Jamie didn't love Crimson Bound. So I'm hoping that being older, she might enjoy Crimson Bound. I keep on saying Crimson Bound. Cruel Beauty! She read Cruel, Cruel Beauty when she was younger, so hopefully now she'll be able to sort of grasp the setting a little bit. Setting? Like, just everything a little bit more. We'll see. Then I have The Mad Men's Daughter. This is by Megan Shepard. It's a horror. It's a retelling of Frankenstein, and it's completely different than everything Jamie's ever read. So I'm so excited for this one, especially because I think it's just so random and so different. Like, thrillers are kind of contemporary, you know? Like... They're, they're not a genre 
that she reaches for, but like they're similar. But Mad Mad's Daughter is like, whoa, that's way different. <laughs> then I have another anthology, it's Shards and Ashes. Again, um, Veronica Ross story in this, I can still remember so clearly in my mind. So I'm really hoping um, that Jamie likes this. And of course, like with anthologies, there's gonna be stories you like and stories you don't. But I think the experience, I hope she likes the experience of reading all these anthologies. Then I have Illusions of Fate by Kirsten White. It's a very short fantasy, standalone fantasy, which I feel like is odd, but I think, I don't know, it involves birds. I liked it when I read it, and I'm curious. And again, most of these fantasies you'll see are not the super popular ones, except for Akamat, Ak Akatar. <laughs> but most of them aren't that popular because I just want to expose her to new things that she probably wouldn't read otherwise. Similar to this last one, the last one is The Nest. This is by Kenneth Opal. And this is about, it's a middle grade. I don't want to say too much about what it's about because I went into it not knowing it just because it was small and I loved it. It was a five star read for me, but it's Magical Realism it's by a Canadian author. I'm just, it's such a random pick, and most of these picks are really random, so I'm so excited for Jamie to read them, just because, like, I have no idea what she's going to think about half of these, and I'm so excited. That was the announcement slash my picks for Jamie video. Stay tuned for my TBR video, sort of the books you'll be seeing me reading for the next six months. I'm excited for this, and I hope you are too. I'll see you later. Happy reading!